Okay, folks, 12.01 p.m. January 10th, midday review. So what I'm going to try and do in this one is um, compress as many of these plays that I'm watching into less than an hour. I'm not going to go into great detail. I'm going to kind of overview. And then over the next uh, 9, 10, 11, seven to 14 days, I'm going to drill these down really deep. Uh, but for today, I'm going to try and give you an overview and I'm going to look at the ones that alarmed uh, that triggered today and look at some trades. Uh, so it's going to be kind of uh, all over the place, uh, try and bring together some of these so you know what I'm watching. Then tonight we're finishing models and we've been struggling to do that, but we're slowly chipping away. Anyway, tonight it should, they should be done. And then by the weekend, I have to finish all the, um, all the swings, drill them right down so that by this time next week I can be in full size on all of them. So that's the goal. Uh, XNet is alarming to the upside. So it did hold this. It had to uh, dump into uh, the mid-quad support to do it, but it did it. So, and this candle was a tell, the one before. You see how the body of the candle is right in the middle with the, shoot, I should have recognized that. Dang it. And it jumped right from there. So it's got a pivot there now. Right there's a pivot, intraday pivot. Bunch. Interesting. I might have to take a trade here. Might not have a choice. I just want to see it on the one minute here, quick, because it's a four hour chart. Stock car size peaking on the one. The five it is two. Dang it. See if you're in a conviction environment, the conviction trade right here would have been your buy when your stock car size. Your MACD and your squeeze start to turn up. See the stock turned up first, then the MACD, and then your squeeze. Dang it. And if it doesn't work, you cut. So now what I have to do is wait for that stock car sign, the one to come off. Hopefully it comes off before it gets to resistance. Probably won't. It'll probably hit resistance, then it come off. Shoot. Pardon me. Oh, well. So anyway, um, the uh, market open video from this morning, I've uh, saved it. It's uploading. I'm going to publish it to the site. I'm going to get... Uh, the most recent videos out. Um, I'm going to highly encourage anybody that's in the room right now or anybody that watches this video to go into the videos of the last few days. I know that a raw video is difficult to get through. It's very cumbersome. It's not packaged drive-through stuff. But it's really critical that you do that if you want to join the train for triple digit gains at minimum this year, but preferably in the first quarter. I hit 100 to 400 percent a year in equities, and I believe the next three years are going to be the best three years inside of at least 100 years. So if you are wondering if I'm a nut and whether or not my predictions are decent, 
and worth weight and investment of your time, you might want to take a look at things that I've predicted in the future. I say all of that completely out of love. I am personally going to, and I believe, have the best three trading years of my life. The turn in that, the time cycle turn, starts now. So the video is over the last three or four or five days, and the videos the next seven to 14 days are going to be crucial. I'm going to drive, drill super deep into these swing trades. And of course, I'll be heightened on my day trades, but I'm going to drill down in a way that I've never drilled down on charting before for swing trades because I'm that keyed up on it. And I'm going to be publishing all of it. I've started, you know, over the last three or four days, but that's just a preview of what I'm going to drill down on. So I'm going to drill it all down and, um, and I'm going to continue that process through that whole time cycle. The big, massive time cycles come later in the year, but the one right now, it's big. It's big enough that a person wants to pay attention to it. But there's like, like massive time cycles coming this year over the next three years. Huge stuff. So just so you know, it's all there. It's the, it's the, it's the main structural pivot in the markets in the last decades, many decades. It's huge. So, anyway, uh, that's just me, you know, again, in love saying, hey, you know what, if there's a time to dig into the technicals, it's over the next two weeks, you know, going four or five days back. I know it's tedious, but there you go. Okay, so what we're going to do here, oh yeah, I got to watch the one minute, don't I? Pardon me, sorry. <clears throat> oh, stock our size coming down already. Good. Nice. Okay, so we're going to move as quick as possible. If you have any charts for me to review, um, get them in as early as possible because I'm going to fly and then I'm going to be exit stage left. i got to go for a dive. I've got a new property that... Um, I've got to go look at all the workers are over there today that I got uh, yesterday. Um, beautiful beachfront, um, modest house, but beautiful location, beautiful property. So I'm going over there. I've got to go for. A, I've got a free dive booked. Um, I've got a gym appointment booked. I got a Spanish lesson booked. I've got a walk monkey. I got a huge day, and then I got to come back and get all the rest of the models done. So this old guy in semi-retirement. He's actually, you know, I'm not going out quiet. I'm, I'm not doing that in this life. So anyway, that's all my updates. Um, our swings are going pretty good. There's, what am I in? Xnet uh, closed out really good. Nice gains. Uh, I think we closed in the 2480 range, and we got in in the um, 2090, 99 range. I can't remember. But anyway, it's a nice little swing. I'm watching Xnet for another entry. I'm in SPXL. I started entering down in here, and in here I'm in 210 size right now. That's, you know, that's going to be a good trade, I think. Um, just getting started. INSY off a little bit today. I'm only in one tenth. I'll hammer down at support. Um, uh, which is the 20 MA. I missed uh, my execution on exiting at the 200 MA, loss of the 200 MA. So at the 20, I'll probably go in three or four or five tenths. Uh, probably three or four tenths. I'm in one tenth right now. Try and get a bounce on it and get my ass out of it uh, with either a small win or, you know, as close to flat as possible, that kind of thing. Um, so that's NC. What else is going on? Uh, SLCA is another trade of mine. It's going well. It's over the 200 on the weekly. This is one of the setups. Um, this is one that I chose. I was saying earlier today I should have spread around a little more on all those swings, but over the next two weeks I'm going to be spreading out all over those swings because a lot of those swings are up today um, and much more than SLCA is. So uh, that's kind of a lesson there. But at the same time, I mean, it's a process, right, of getting into the turn can't go too deep too fast. In fact, in a lot of ways, I am too deep already. I mean, it's only day one of the turn, uh, so, you know, it plays out over the next couple of weeks. Another one that we were watching was HMNY. Uh, Corey and a few others were in it this morning. 
I put the chart up and you'll see that if you watch that uh, market open video. That market open video, by the way, shows you a little bit on the modeling on the fly, tells you a little bit about the time cycles concluding, uh, tells you what I'm watching, uh, anybody that wants to learn how to structurally trade so it's predictable, low risk, compounding your trade uh, wins uh, in a, you know, a high win percentage category of 80, 90 percent or better. Uh, we'll want to watch that. So here we go. We've got an alarm on XOMA right now. Let's take a look at this one too quick. So there's a lot of alarms here today too. So this is a lot to get through in one session. but do our best. And this computer uh, needs to be switched. So Sartaj is going to switch this one out when he gets here. Um, and because I'm going to be bringing up uh, model to chart, things are going to move a little slow, unfortunately. Okay, so SQ had alarmed. That alarmed based on the MACD on the 60 minute. It started to curl up. So I'm watching that very close. Um, we'll go through the alarms here first. So I'm going to bring it out to the four hour now. The four hour is um, setting up nicely. MACD unfortunately is on its way down on the four hour. So that's indecisive, uh, unfortunately. Hmm. Daily. Stock car size are really high. MACD's trending, squeezes trending, so that's all okay. Oh, there's a sidewinder setting up here. So the 20 down through the 50, price above, the 20 comes back, breaches that 50. That thing's going for a ride. So that's why we're seeing the action we're seeing here intraday. That MACD. So there's the one minute. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking a look at my indicators to see if I can get an alarm here. So on the five, I'm going to go with the alarm being uh, stock RSI, crossing stock RSI. And then if alarms again, I'll come back to it. So the next alarm I want to look at is XOMA. So we're going to, this is not XOMA. That is XOMA on the daily. Okay, so we, let's look at the SP really quick. It's getting into an intraday time cycle here at 12:24. Um, so I'm just watching close. Did I alarm this? I don't think I have alarms on this anymore. I don't have a choice. Sorry, guys. 274.20. Doing this properly slows everything down. Especially when my computer is not the fastest. But you know, I have fast gaming computers in here too, and even they struggle sometimes with some of these charts and everything that's going on. Okay, so that's to the upside. I don't know what I did. Oh, I see. <laughs> and then to the downside. While I'm distracted, I want to make sure I have an alarm on that. I encourage people to use stops, but I don't because what I do is structural. If I'm holding for any amount of time, if it's not structural, I'm right on top of it. Um, so I use alarms and I just make sure I'm in proper structural trades. Or, you know, if it's risky, then I'll have the chart open with one eyeball on it at least the whole time. Uh, SLCA, do I need an alarm on this? I don't think I do. I'm in it, and I'm in it to win it. I am SY, XNet. Okay, so there's the stock RSI on the one. I really wonder if they're going to run this again. It's interesting that it, it got jig right at noon there, right at the turn of the bell. On 
not really interesting. I hate to get into this trade while I'm supposed to be reviewing charts because it'd be a day trade. shares. But man, it's hard to avoid this one. Really hard. Could be a huge turn in it. Turn back up. It's possible. Well, huh. I guess I could just go with stops on it. See, so S&P doing getting into this time cycle. six minutes away. Well, they're alarmed, so I think I'm, oops. I'm just going to sit for a second. Okay, so XOMA, that alarm was on the stock RSI right here, turning up on the daily. Now, yesterday's daily candle, if I'm seeing that right, is a turn candle. Yes. So this becomes a buy as long as the indicators line up. What the heck? I don't know why it's doing that, but whatever. Pretty much right when that alarms, it's a buy. Now, weekly. That's its problem. Dang it. 200 MA. Uh, 30, call it 33.50 to, by the time it gets there, 36 or so. That's not much of a gain. I think I'm going to kill this alarm. I'll just put it up here so that when the test happens I'm on top of it. Uh, I should just kill the alarm and do the proper one. Let's do things proper. So we're going to delete this alarm. What we're going to do is we're going to alarm it for when the price gets up to the 200. So add alert crossing 200 MA on the weekly. I just can't do that one in good conscience. I want to hit it here, but Zaxnet is flattening out here. I do the midday reviews over lunch because things are only calm. 
Yeah, see, it's getting into the time cycle and it's getting a little lift here. We want to see a lot of lift here. See how, it, as it gets right into that time cycle, that's what happens. Now, up or down. Uh, <clears throat> it's not getting enough lift to get, you know, anywhere near the top of the quad. But what normally happens now is that it'll follow this quad wall up. That's normally what's next. And then if you bring this chart over, so up into here, that's normally what will happen. Not that it will for sure, but more often than not, that's how it works. Once you learn the price action of these quads, they're just a series of clues, right? Okay, so I've got that alarmed. I don't have the, do I have the downside? I don't have the downside alarmed. I thought I stuck an alarm there. Yeah, I did. There it is. I'm going to move that up. This fails, I want to know a little earlier. Just because of the time cycles. So one quick review real quick on S&P is that uh, this is a test area. So up over 275.05 ish. Um, I would expect continued bullish S&P activity. Uh, right here is the pivot. Oops, sorry. Here's the pivot on, on the test area. So that's the mid area of the test. And then the lower support of the test is down here at 271, call it 80 ish. 90, 271, 90. Um, and in between is all a test as far as the time cycle is concerned for the first part of this year. And right now, we're just right in, literally in the middle of the test. Um, so that's why you've seen kind of the market the way it is in the last 24 hours. Okay, <clears throat> so we're just watching this, you know, test play out. I'm in two tenths size SPXL right now. And... Um, yeah. Okay, so that's that. Um, hold on two seconds here. Actual charts. Uh, let's go into them now. Yeah, so this time cycle's uh, peak is coming here any minute. It's just getting into it literally right now. So that's awesome. Um, other alarms, let's go through them quick. SQ, we looked at uh, XNet, we looked at SPY, Oak. Uh, so Oak is uh, one of the ones I'm watching. It's under the 200 MA, but um, there's a setup here developing. Uh, the turn candle here was two days ago, and uh, there's a detailed chart in the swing trading um, report. Um, it's not quite there in my mind, so I'm not going to go through the details here, but it's in the report if you wanted to. XRT, so this is retail. Uh, it alarmed at um, Uh, January 10th at 9.30, so this morning at 9.30. Uh, the details of that alarm. Oh, that's XNet, XRT, here we go. XRT, where did you go? Interesting. So I don't have the, oh, here it is. XRT. So crossing the value of 45.56. So on the daily, way over it's 200 MA. If you go back into my 
Twitter feed, you'll see I was alerting this when this happened. I didn't take the trade, story of my life, but I would alerted it. This is an interesting test here. Very, very interesting. I'm going to have to, I have to admit, I, I have to watch this because this is structurally pretty cool stuff. Even though my bias is against a good long trade here, technically it's setting up. There's workers right outside my window. They're pressure washing this rooftop deck here that just got put onto the treehouse. Uh, so the timings kind of sucks there, but whatever. <coughs> okay, so that's XRT, XMT, EXP. So that was January 10th. So that was this morning at open. Wow, this is done just fantastic. So this is the weekly chart. Stock RSI turned up on weekly. Look at that. MACD is trending. Squeeze momentum is not the best here. Earnings. January 23rd. So it's not my favorite setup. In fact, not so much that I'm not even going to alarm it. I can almost guarantee it's getting near its top. CELG, Stochastic RSI Alarm. This is its weekly. Dang. I'm just going to take that trade too. See, there's another one. So, this is getting interesting too. What we're going to do is we're going to go with um, that stock car sign makes this really, really interesting. Squeeze momentum's coming down though. Two hundred has been its nemesis on the weekly. MACD is about to turn on the weekly. This is setting up. There's no doubt about it. Seven twenty. It's setting up. You just can't ignore structural setups. I've killed myself so many times, or missed trades so many times because of my bias. Trying to get this SQ uh, chart up here. It's funny, trading views. There we go. Okay, five minute. This is not an easy stock to trade. But it's been a good trade. I'm going with the MACD crossover on the four hour. So it doesn't bother us. Okay, so that's what's been happening recent as far as. Uh, let's take a look at the SP quick here. So I got a little jump into it to see how it built into that time cycle. And now the test is on. So what I'm going to do, I really want to see it up over this fib and then up and over that 
click and follow this sidewall. So I'm going to bring this alarm up a little bit because I want to know a little earlier. I mean, we're right in the core, of the, or in the eye of the storm now, in terms of testing. It's like when uh, those two earthquakes hit. Earthquakes. Well, actually, an earthquake did hit me. <laughs> but uh, the um, what are they called? The big storms, hurricanes. Uh, the second one, I was right under the eye of the storm, literally. So awesome. Okay, so let's get into, um, that's coming off, so that's odd. They bought into it right at lunch and now it's coming off. Like I was looking at the technicals going, why are they buying into it right now? But then I was thinking, man, buys at that time of day. That's people that typically know what's going on. HMNY, look at this, off the 20 on the 30. It's coming back, last hour and a half. Getting close to VWAP. We are going to look at a few, as I have time, of ones that I've been watching. So we have XNet. Okay, this this particular chart. give you a good idea of how to really get an on-the-fly model going. So what you do if you're using these charts, so I, I actually posted this to my Twitter feed this morning, is you click here on share, and you click on make it mine, and then the chart loads. So this is going to be a little slower than most reviews because these charts take time to load, especially on this computer. So when the chart actually comes up, to kill these um, indicators at the bottom, so at the bottom is the MACD, stock RSI, and um, squeeze momentum. To get those out of the way, what you do is you put your cursor on the body part of the chart, double click, and double click to bring them back. And that's how you get rid of them and bring them back. So there's your chart. Now, well, we've got two little donuts right in the middle here. Remove, get rid of one. There's two down here. Remove. Okay. Um, so the white arrows are buy and sell triggers. What they are is they represent the mid quads. So your main quad. Now, but this actually has to be on the four hour for it to work properly because it was it was developed on the four hour. I published it on the daily. Dang, that'll confuse some folks. Oh yeah. So what happened here was I charted some on the four hour, some on the daily, and then your lines don't add up. But anyway, I'll show you how to use these charts. These buy and sell triggers don't change anyway. <clears throat> so your big mid quad is right here. Big resistance at 2505. How do I know that? The quad is here. I'm not going to teach how to do the charting. I'm just saying how to read it, right? So that's your big one. And then there's smaller quads like this one and this one. And their mid quads are support and resistance. So they become buy sell triggers, the top of the quads. So basically where these donuts are are your main ones. And then, you know, there's a few that are kind of in between the donuts. But that's where they all are. And then all you do is you just... Uh, magnify it so you can see what's going on on a tighter time range and um, anyway up in here is the area I'm watching for this target here at 2505 but if it gets up over the resistance where we were selling earlier then this target up here at 30 32 is in play ish and that's how that works <clears throat> that charts on my Twitter feed and um, the trading view It's going to be impossible to get through these in the time period, so I'm going to just say, you know, go through my Twitter feed or any of my other feeds, go through uh, the midday review videos, go through the pre-market, market open videos, go through um, 
anywhere that I've published in over the last few days and the next week or two. The drill down is here. Oak. So I wasn't going to open this one, but I'm going to open it because we have a chart here. So it is trading at 44, 45, so it's just getting into this. So it's testing to get out of this quad into the next. The larger quad is here, but um, this thing could get going here. So anyway, uh, the way I will handle this is if it actually starts to prove into here, especially if it's over here, 46, 46, it's going to target at least 49.08, if not there. Um, it's not the easiest trade right now, so I'm not going to take one, but it's there. The setup is there. <clears throat> Buy sell triggers I noted. BTC, so BTC got right to its mid quad, right at the time cycle. Dollar, S&P, we've been following the EXP. So that's the one that just alarmed. Yeah, it's trading through its model, perfect. Kala, C-A-L-A. I was randomly in this one the other day, I just want to see what it's doing. So Kala has a few different scenarios and targets. Let's just uh, magnify this a little bit. Let's see, it's holding there. Interesting. So I've got it alarmed. It's really interesting stuff. <coughs> Pardon me. So it's not there yet, but it's holding. You'd have to go through the reports to get all the details in each one of these, but the purpose here is to get a feel for what's going on. And then uh, CELG so far in this wash up area, and the decisive, we looked at that. HIIQ. So it's got to resolve out of the quad. It's in. It's at the end of a quad. Take a look here. So it's got whatever eight, nine days to resolve. So I'm a little early looking at that one. AAOI. How are we coming along, AAOI? I want to see exactly where it is in its model. Should be soon. I'm going to hammer on this one when it turns. It will definitely.
definitely will be one of my largest sizing. Printing states really important on this one. So let's dump again into the next quad down. Like if you extend the quad, right? So I'll show you really quick. I'll just extend this quad. I have people message me all the time, Kurt, why aren't you stressed? Because, you know, my sizing's right. I can trade on anything if it's still around. Because if you're only in one tenth sizing, you know, your next hit is three tenths. Now you're in four tenths. And your next hit is six tenths. You better get it right in one of those three hits. So you see how it's in the cradle of this quad? You freaked out the longs here. <laughs> Hit the top of this quad, bounce back up in. It's right in the cradle of that quad. So it's, its peak time cycle is on the 10th at today at 2.30. So same thing, it might work out of there. Right up that quad wall. So I'm going to watch this one really close now. So what we want to do is we want to alarm. It's had really, really clean trade, boy. I guess I don't need these other ones if they're alarmed. I'll just take these off, free up some. Ram here. So this is its weekly. It's getting close to the 200 MA right now. Peaked right up into the top of the quad. Came off. It's probably going to end the quad here at 58.70. So it'll get down into here and then bounce, I bet. So the trick on this one is where do you put the alarm? go with the stock RSI. Oh, I'll warm that one tonight again. GDX.
interesting. So GD axis really indecisive. Can't give you a read on that. I'm short just a one tenth size in gold right now. holding. We'll see what happens with it here. SSW structurally. This is such a structurally keyed up trade, you know, like when it got into its time cycle peak here, right up over the 200, that's really critical, that's really bullish. And now the 20s come through the 200. Well, this is on the weekly, that's even more bullish. No, this is daily, sorry. You see that? So the 20s coming through, 200, it's about to get through the 100. Price is above, it's over the 200. See the big candle into the time cycle peak? It didn't get to the top, but it's over the mid here. So just the fact that it was over the mid and didn't even get down to the test, that's bullish. The fact that it swung up into the peak time cycle for that quad, bullish. The fact that it's holding over the next fib, bullish. And the fact that the 20 is about to breach the 100 with price above bullish. So not extremely bullish, but moderately bullish and technically a champion. So how do you play that? See, when it gets into this next quad, it's going to chase one of three targets. That upper that mid to that lower. It's got the 200 under it right now. Just looking at the indicators quick. I just well, took a long trade there, but I got disciplined for a second there and said, I better look at these indicators and time it properly. Okay, this is the hourly stock RSI right here. It's curled up. MACD is about to. So. We're going to go with the MACD at alert. So if that MACD curls up, there's a 90% chance I'll be long. So that's SSW. So the first thing I'll do tonight is get these all these videos that I haven't posted yet posted because there's chunky stuff in here, XOMA, we'll look at this structure, we already looked at it but not, not this particular model, 
So it's a 200 MA on the weekly. That's got me reserved here. But other than that, this sucker set up. So anyway, I'll watch that quad. Now this is just a, you know, a sliver of what's been in those reports. Just a quick side note, it's funny, there's a couple of folks that have taken uh, my um, charting discipline and um, they're um, using it for financial gain and, you know, I don't own the discipline on it, but I just think it's funny that, like, why would you, you know, like, it'd be like, like do, taking it and doing it exact, like everything from colors to you know the whole discipline, it's like it's like a it's like a writer, right, or like an artist. Like why would you take their exact discipline? Like when you look at one of my charts, you know it's one of my charts, right? I just don't understand that. Um, that's my complaint for the day. Twenty-two oh four. So this is the sidewinder that's setting up MACD, price above, I mean, sorry, 50 MA with price above, 20 MA about to come through the underside. Super cool setup. Now, stock our side just turned back up, volume's good, MACD trending and squeeze momentum's trending all in the daily. That's really cool. Wow, this market turn is going to be so much fun. So in the five minutes, it's moved into indecision. Over lunch here. Fifteen minute. Just want to get get a feel for a good entry. This is the hourly. Interesting. That last hourly candle says this hourly candle and the next are going to be up. Amazing. So it's been an indecision for some time, actually. I mean, it's moderately bullish since <clears throat> December 13th. Moderately bullish with indecision, but it's working its way up over the 200 on the four hour. So this is a conviction trade for the bulls. That's what's going on here. That's what that chart says. Wow. The weekly controls the story.
So you got indecision because your stock R size turned up. Your MACD is not, but it looks like it's going to, and your squeeze momentum hasn't cranked up yet. But the volume's good. So, geez, this is a tough one to enter. So I gotta find a buy trigger here. <coughs> Daily. Daily says buy. Stock car size high, high, but look at that squeeze in that MACD. We got a pivot right here. 2044. So my downside's a buck fifty. So the safest buy trigger is right here, 22.75. I'm sticking with it. That's a good setup. Don't miss that one. Really good setup. Should be long there, but just requires too much conviction. APRI. S and P is alarming got up off the floor. Nice. Okay, so what we need on the S&P is up over to here, 274.36. I don't think it's going to do it this quick. I think it's going to have to work its way up this quad wall, but I'm going to alarm it, 274.36. It gets up over there, and I'll really hammer. in two tenths size right now, which is quite big. Doesn't sound big, but it's big in these accounts. 221. Finished a sidewinder. Got a pop. Not much of a sidewinder, but a sidewinder nonetheless. Stock RSI is what we're going to use as a buy trigger on the daily. SKT, INSY, JP, MNKD, DXY. Okay, so those. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to regular charting here for a second. And so EOG, I'm not going to bring it up on the screen. It's up 1.26% today. It's almost near its all-time high as that charting is in the swing report. Well, actually, let's bring it up really quick. EOG. 
eccoci so on the daily or weekly gives you a visual of the weekly everything's trending up it was on the report it came out of a sidewinder and it's done well um, I'm not in it I should have spread some in there and I didn't RSX so I've been tweeting and charting this for some time recently it's up a bit on the day there's its weekly chart very structured setup um, just watching it, but that stock car side turning up, I sure like that. It's over its 200. 100 is about to breach the 200. That squeeze momentum I don't like. So it's almost there for me, but not quite there. The biggest should have, would have, could have is BOFI that I've been charting and swing reports and sending out lately. Uh, it's up another four and a half percent today. It's just done fantastic. This is its weekly stock car size peaking now. It's near its all time breakout. Not quite there for me. Um, oil, I'm not going to get into, but it is getting closer and closer to a very key resistance. Uh, Bitcoin has jumped off its mid quad, which is good. Um, Good for the bowls that it held in the time cycle. So it hit that mid quad perfectly, like perfectly, date and time, price. So I'll show you what to watch for here. But I'm looking at uh, long positions in Bitcoin. Probably as early as this evening's session. So this is where the mid quad is for the date. Hit it perfect. Now it's getting a jump. You see that 20 MA? It's just getting up into that 20 MA right now. That's your day here. That's your test. Next test. That fib. Well, this cluster of fibs and that 20 MA. So if it gets up over the 20 and it's up over the 50, it looks like it's going to make it out of this time cycle. Okay, but it's, you know, it's still, it's still being decided. Okay, so that's what I wanted to look at. Um, as far as ones that are moving on the day, I'm just going to breeze through these really fast. AMRH, so it's over, it's 200 on the daily now. Um, something to watch. Don't really like it. Kodak, don't like LEDS. So there gives you an idea how volatile it is. If you're on top of it, you can trade it for decent profit for sure. Same with TSRI. So these all kind of look the same, right? They're not very structured charts, but they're threatening all of them, you know. It's just um, you know, that big volatility, man. You've got to be right on top of it. People get murdered in there. AFSI up against this 200, TNDM. Way under its 200. Bottom play, HMNY. Charted earlier today. Box trade, testing its 200, MFIN. So one of those charts that can just go mad for a while.
So there's really nothing on there that I'm really pumped about. So I'm not going to go through them. We're just over an hour now. Um, so anyway, I'm going to call midday. I don't see anybody asking for any charts to be reviewed. That get, kind of gives you a feel. It's not perfect, but it gives you a feel of what's going on. Uh, oh, look, our S&P test is coming up here. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, it gives you a feel. It's not perfect, but um, the next 7 to 10, 14 days, I'll drill really deep in these. I'm just going to bring up um, XNet. XNet and S&P are my main watches before I leave here for possible scaling in. It's just not there yet, but it's getting there. Really, your your main trigger is going to be right. It gets up and holds 24.99. Man, that sucker's gone. Well, look at that's even yeah. It all works. Technically, it's a beautiful chart. I like it a lot. Yes, and go. Okay, super cool. So we're in the money zone for sure. And over the next 7 to 14 days, man, don't miss the videos. I'm telling you, I'm going to drill them deep. You guys have a great day. i got to get on my stuff, and then I'll be back for futures and reporting tonight. Talk to you soon. Thanks.